Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome to a, a discussion as we have our great guest, Dr. Short here. And uh, tonight we'll be discussing um, some of the ill effects or uh, dangers of uh, feminism. We have Dr. Short here and hopefully everybody could join us. I apologize for the delay. There's some things that I need to get together. <laughs> um, because we understand that time is limited and to have a guest that, in my opinion of Dr. Short is, uh, I need to be respectful to you guys as well as Dr. Short. What's going on, Dr. Short? <clears throat> oh man, I'm, I'm white today. Um, and I hope you're white too. I'm transracial. All of us <laughs> are transracial. In fact, I mean, white would be perfect with the reparations check. In fact, they, White I I woke up a little white and bougie this morning. Felt a little, yeah. You know, one of my so tart, like, one of my tartar, my eggs pooched. Mm -hmm. <laughs> From when I feel white, I want to take someone else's natural resources and then blame them for their poverty. Hmm. I want to kick them out of their neighborhood and then curse them for being homeless. Start a start a a, a war over in start Russia a war. somewhere. With for, with people who don't even want to fight me, and yet they're bad if they don't like me. Yeah, I guess it's a really it's you know when someone hurts me, I think I should take an automatic weapon and hurt a bunch of people at a school or hospitals, you know, because I'm having a bad day and be taken alive. Or or well, and you know, I? I I know neither neither one of us mess with substances, but boy, Hunter Biden looked like he just made the world his oyster and. He could just or do what he want to do, and nobody say he's nothing. Made, nobody he's made care. the world his hookah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, I bet you if, if there was enough dookie, he'd put it in the pipe and try to smoke it if he thought yeah, he just you know. And his, and, 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 and his father would justify it. And got all these kids, and just don't have to claim them, and just okay, and mess well, with his brother, his brother's so, mess with his brother's wife, and just and his wife, his brother's daughter. Yeah, just yeah. he got that too. <laughs> just, well, just see, he just said, "I do what I want," and then get hit with a misdemeanor. Meanwhile, we got our jails is filled up with people who who are forced to claim that they were guilty. They had to plead, and he was out able to plead down. Yeah, from what he did. Um, <laughs> look, I'm gonna just say this before I get into it: is that one of the greatest evils of feminism is its hypocrisy. That a man who's known for mistreating women, Mr. Biden, or for that matter, Ted Kennedy, their range of these men, or Harvey Weinstein, powerful men, uh, do whatever the hell they want to women, and you don't hear a damn peep from these goddamn feminists when it's a rich, powerful, God forbid, white male, uh, no matter what he does is good, uh, powerless working class oppressed black man cracks a sex joke and folks want to put him in Alcatraz mm. for life. Uh, yeah. A woman feeling, feeling uncomfortable, even, you know, you and I talking about, you know, strippers that we saw last week and she's 15 feet away and she's feeling uncomfortable with us talking to each other off in the corner. And yet she can work with the boss that grabs her boobs behind closed doors for years. Or be or be like um, <clears throat> um our vice president, sleep her way to the top. And as long as, you know, she get what she wants, it's mm -hmm. quite all right. I mean, you know, uh, speaking of Kamala Harris, uh, I was just thinking, saying to someone, uh, which Kensett kitchen cooking utensil is most like Kamala Harris's tongue? <laughs> I don't know. Well, a spatula. <laughs> you, you could really, in fact, you know, I tell anybody that that submarine that imploded, it didn't have to be that way. They should have had Kamala and Kamala go down on it, because Kamala she goes down a lot, but she always comes back up. Uh, so she, I mean, can you imagine? In fact, in fact, she could probably she could probably take on that whole sub. He's got jaws. I don't know. Literally. You know, you see, you know uh, pythons and certain snakes can like move their the ligaments in their jaw and swallow something bigger than themselves. 
I mean, we're just wondering if she's got that kind of reptilian uh, ambidexterity in her jaws to just take on whatever the uh, assignment. I mean, for her, you know, she started off life with Mission Impossible. You know what that was? Staying a virgin. <laughs> done, done, done. I mean, that's Mission Impossible for Kamala Harris. <laughs> so, so let me let me ask you, Doctor Shaw. Everybody um, always says how feminine and the independent woman movement are different. Are they different? You know, as a historian, no. are they different? It's all the same. It's all it's all the same group of. of unhappy women you know let's say this before we go any further one i believe a hundred percent that women have and must have the right to vote to be educated uh to be paid fairly to be inviolate which means they shouldn't be harassed walking down the street people doing wolf whistles all this it's inappropriate no one should be able to touch them that they don't want touching and vice versa. They shouldn't touch anybody. They should have uh, protections, Title IX protections, which uh, allow women to have spaces for women where, they, where men have no business being. And I also believe that women have the right to, one, not be forced to have 50 kids. Uh, women should be safe from violence in or outside the home and vice versa should be held accountable that they are not violent against men or children and they are treated as equals under the law. So if I'm a woman and I take my child to a no good greasy spoon and I have a fight with my boyfriend for me to get my son to shoot and kill a man, mm. Um, she should go to jail just like that 14-year-old boy. If I was a man and I took my son, I, they wouldn't just look at the boy, they'd get me too. Uh, so real equality means real accountability, real responsibility, and equal consequences. In fact, I want equality to the point where women get drafted to serve in the military. It'd be nice to see some of these fat twerking folks have to go to the army and climb up and down stuff since people want to be as much like a man as possible, give them the whole goddamn package. Let's see, as women are bitching about men pretending to be women in their sports, uh, okay, what it's really about that men and women are not identical, they should not be. I don't have a monthly, I don't want to have a monthly just dealing with poop is annoying enough. I couldn't imagine like a bloody discharge. Can you imagine every time you look up, you got some stuff that looks like some bad Heinz ketchup coming out and you got to keep cramming stuff up there and holding it out. Um, you know, more power to women that deal with that. They have to worry about yeast infection. I don't like yeast in my bread. Can you imagine up on your cervix or something and it's and all the infections and things? Um, you know, you can Eat bad food and it can jack your pussy up. Bad dick can jack your pussy up. I, look, let women have women's space, rights, dignity. Um, they sh they don't have the right to kill babies. Okay, that's one. Thing. I'm sorry. Go that to that is always the uh, ba baby killing is the, against the, God. The, the, I, inter I, the interesting I, I, thing is that uh, that's when they start with their stuff with saying it's a cop, my it's body, a cop, my choice. It's a cop out. So if it's your body, your choice, then you don't need child support, too. Yeah, right. I mean, come on. Your body, your choice. If you swing at someone and they bust you the hell out, you shouldn't be able to call and scream, scream domestic violence. It should go both ways all the way around or not at all. Okay. And so, no, I'm not calling for violence against anyone. But if you put your hands, you know, domestic violence is as often, if not more so, the first person to swing or to do is a female. The so domestic violence is at every bit 50 50 or more where the women are the aggressor in the relationship. And uh, Christine Hoff Summers' book, Who Stole Feminism, talks about that. So, domestic violence, the way it's presented before us is that it's just men beating the shit out of women. Are there men that beat down and abuse women? Yes, and most men hate such men. 
we also know there's a huge number of women who defend, enable, rationalize, and justify violence. In fact, there's a type of female that drives a man to violence. Mm. And uh, if you've ever seen the type that will like yell and scream, look, if I come at you a certain way as a man and I get too close to you and I'm yelling at you, you're going to hit me. If I'm like close, too close to your eyes, you're going to swing for territorial primacy as a man. Yeah. I have seen women get in men's faces, do stuff, get physical in a way the man understands a blow is coming or blows. And I've seen women violate men's space, but just, just, oh, and the and men, they'll, and, and they'll the men guys just, didn't say, uh, you know, that's, that's her being her or that's, you and, know, and she it's got him attitude. being him. If he punches her in the face, Yeah, that's him yeah. being a man. You violated, yeah. you're attacking his ego. You're doing all this stuff. That feminism says that men have these fragile egos. And, they, and then you come and you demean him in front of people in a public thing. Or, and you're in this space and you're testing him, daring him to hit you. If I'm a man, I dare, someone's going to hit me. And since you want to be equal to a man, then what would be equal is that you got into my face. You were violent. You were disrespectful. You walked in my ego. You insulted me. And you got knocked the hell out. That's what would happen if I treated men the way that I've seen a lot of. I've, 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 I'm telling you, here in the DC area, I've dealt with some aggressive women who put their hands and do, and it's like you know, lady, in the real world, I've had someone literally spit in my face, and then turn around and accuse me of assaulting them. I have to agree with you because majority of the time when it's a situation with primarily black men, 99% of the time it's going to be a woman around there. It's going to be a woman involved in that situation that's going to cause for something to happen. Well, Me and yeah. you could see each other on the street. We'll do the head nod. We'll speak. Mm -hmm. We'll look eye to eye peace. But the minute it's a, you go in these stores and the woman behind the counter, it's always some type of confrontational attitude. Well, not aggressive. It's not even confrontational. You're just there and someone's like, for example, I garden. At Lowe's and Home Depot, if the um, topsoil bags are torn, you can get a discount. Sometimes they'll sell a bag for a dollar or half price. I know what it's like to see some go up. There's a black lady at the counter. And she, uh, when she rang every, I asked her how much of these, she says, well, regular prices, but they're torn. Oh, well, they're just 10% off. Uh, and she was nasty about that, ah, right? It was like, wow. And I'm a grown man, probably old enough to be her father. My mother was sitting there, Paul, and it's all these people looking, and she's talking to me like I'm stealing when I'm in the process of paying for it. Now, let me tell you something. I blame black men for this. I'll share with you why. Uh, the same way the woman enables a man to mistreat her or cheat on her or whatever, we enable sisters to be disrespectful of females with pork chops. And uh, it used to be if someone was super rude to me, I wouldn't say anything because I'm thinking that may be a single mother. That's the only income for the family. She's probably been hurt by people. And I'm thinking about her, 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 her. And <laughs> right. All the while they're putting daggers in me, me without a cause. Mm -hmm. And I had to reach a point and say, you know, why am I doing penance for the fucked up men that these whores lay down with? You picked a dude that's a serial uh, <laughs> a jailbird or a serial cheater or a batterer. That's who you picked. Mm -hmm. Why do I have to be extra nice to you when you're violating me, when you're comfortable with a dude that will, will pop you in the head with one of those old uh, telephones, 
the person will punch you out or but you are nice to that, but me who's respectful, fuck me. And so one of the things that happened, the COVID thing, I'll tell this story. It's because you gotta aggressively deal with these no good feminists and our community and everywhere else. What happened was I lost my bank card and I didn't have but ten dollars. And so I need to get a new bank card. And it was a Saturday, and the only way I could get to the bank is I would have to take the metro. And I would take then I would get to the metro and I get out in Maryland, go to the bank and come back. What happened was I got to the metro and the metro machine took my $10. They owe me money. The first black woman at the metro station was looking at me like, what were you standing there for? Like, she saw me, but she didn't want to be helpful. And I get it, right? And to say to her, ma'am, I put money in this machine. And I, it took it. Well, which machine? This is the one I'm standing next to. So she comes over, and the first thing she tries to do is prove that I didn't put the t- $10 in there. Okay, that's how a lot of black women are. Okay, and that's why a lot of them are being fired from government jobs over the place. I I swear to you, it's going on now, and it's karma. I warned if Biden got in, a whole lot of this stuff is coming back. A lot, um, people have noticed it's karma time, and initially the machine it's jammed, it didn't work because she was trying to say, well, are you sure you put ten dollars in there? And I says, ma'am, I've been coming to this station for 40 years. I have never said that I put money in the machine that I didn't. So we go over to the other machine, other, and it, it says that I had put $10 in. She didn't apologize to me for having implied I'm trying to get over to get free ride or whatever. <laughs> anyway, so she gives me a Metro pass or a little thing so I can get in and explains to me that I uh, need to show that to get out of the next Metro station. And um, I had to call Metro for them to put the money on my card. I called Metro immediately. They let me know it would take up to two hours for them to put uh, the money back on my card. That two hours or three hours, whatever, may be longer than the length of time that I need to do my transaction at the bank, which means when I go back to get in the Metro system, I don't have any money and it'll be another person look at me as a black man trying to get something for nothing. So I said, well, what do I do? I had my mask on, I had gloves. So when I get to the Greenbelt station and get off, I says, I don't want a problem. Let me go over and see the uh, person in the kiosk. And lo and behold, it's another black woman. So it says, okay. And you and I, you know what I'm saying? You have to brace yourself. For the toxic shit that's you gotta inside prepare. of a lot. You gotta prep yourself. You have to be prepared you... for the fucked up <laughs> pork chop feminist behavior you're gonna get no matter how you speak, no matter how you're dressed, no matter how respectful you are, she's gonna disrespect and insult you. And uh and and if you in any way get upset or push that just escalates, right? So I knock on the thing, and the lady's rolling her eyes like she doesn't want to speak to me. And I says, okay, God, help me. What do you want? And I show this thing, well, you can leave. I says, I understand that. But, ma'am, I just put money on my card. They're going to do that in downtown, but they told me it would be several hours. Um... If I get back from the bank before, would you honor that? And she says, you already got a free ride. You need to leave. The ticket in my hand implied that I had paid and didn't get my money. In other words, 
they defrauded me, not me defraud them, but because I'm a black man, of course I'm crooked, of course I'm stealing, of course I'm wrong. And even another person within Metro signing and giving me isn't enough to validate who I am or what my issue was. It's not her damn money. Now, let me tell you, I went out and I was serious because it, it, it wouldn't have killed her to let me back in. In fact, I want to let you know this. The problem is in the Metro now, if people come in and they don't pay the metro people not to stop them if they just get on without paying. Contrast that to what I did. Mm. And it's completely, <laughs> every which kind of way what I did was an intelligent, sharp way to do that. When I got out, I was mad and I said, you know, you, you can't, you can't. You have to kick this broad's ass. She needs to get her ass kicked because she's gonna. She's probably probably does this to people all day long, and to everyone. And and no one ever says a thing because if I have titties, I can treat people any way I want, especially in the black community. Again, I blame black men. Black men are bitches. We treat anyone with a vagina. It can do whatever they want. Just. So you might get some, so be nice. <laughs> no, matter, no matter how big, no matter how ugly, no matter how funky, no matter, you might get some, so never say anything. As if you can screw everybody. You know, if a black man with this stupid ass mindset could actually give himself a body, he would have a body covered in dicks to try to screw everything because everything is about his penis. Okay. He wouldn't even, he probably would have a penis over his navel everywhere. I mean, he wouldn't even be able to be born because he's just trying to like get his dicks waxed all day long. He'd have dicks coming out of his eyeballs because this is what he thinks makes him a man just being a fucking male whore all the time. It's what makes you a man. So I decided to deal with her. So I wrote Metro, a very, 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 very harsh <laughs> service review. And uh, <laughs> the next time I went up to that broad wasn't there. But I, one of the comments I meant, mentioned is that if she had a problem dealing with people during daytime hours, she should work in the evening. In fact, you guys should give her a lifetime Starbucks card so she can have enough coffee so she's a decent person the damn morning. And I, I just and I wrote it as if I was a white man, of course. And it, you oh, so you were white that day. Yeah, I was white to talk about how hurtful and how this black woman had a look with eyes that could kill. And I I felt like she wanted to like get revenge <laughs> on her master. So, man, I dealt with that dog. I punished that stud that stud. <laughs> and I bet you she's got a different attitude towards people, but normally most brothers man. She's been through, she probably got, we make too many fucking excuses for women being like this. I've traveled around the world when a woman is known as a puta in the, in the Portuguese or Spanish, women that are nasty with jacked up attitudes get slapped down, beat down by men and women. It's normal. It's not something that you accept. You don't have the right to be an ugly, foul mm -hmm. person. Are you hearing me? Yeah, yeah, you back now. So, uh, no, somebody called and I, I hung up and it's still put connected. <laughs> so, so, the, so the guys, so the guys, Doctor Short is always, oh, that's her attitude. That's how she is. Well, that's how women. She's just being a girl. Well, you know, yeah. she's, she's got to right. be that way. She's from the hood. Yeah, no, it's bullshit. The men are getting passports where women are pleasant and feminine, and you don't feel like you you're gonna have to like do um you know bum fights <laughs> remember that when they'd have the uh, homeless people fight <laughs> that you 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 on the set of bum fights over space, every time you deal over with space. The female. huh over, i said the bum fights be over space public yes. space yeah 
And so I I I don't want to. Why is that? So, and, and other situations where you've had people put their literally put their hands on you, and you're like, don't you know I could like hit you and knock you out? I mean, why would you? And something's told people. I'll give you another uh, feminist moment. Uh, the number two man at the Museum of African American History at one point was uh, Mr. John uh, W. Franklin. And he asked me to do a review of the Reginald Lewis Museum in Baltimore. He wanted me to go through as a historian and look around and then tell him how I found the museum. So I went to the museum, took the train up to Baltimore. I was in a suit, had a trench coat on, all of that. And when I got in, I didn't know anything. So I get in. And I know that it costs to go in, so I came in with money to pay, but I couldn't find where to give the money to come in. You know, when you're a black man, it's okay, they're gonna immediately, if I'm not trying to pay, I'm trying to break in something. I get it. So I'm trying to figure out, looking around, I see a security guard kiosk. It's a black woman. She's slightly overweight. Bad sign. Okay. Yeah, I said that. That's why I'm harsh. A whole lot of outrageous fat women in our community. I mean, you should be ashamed of being fat and you have a nasty attitude as well. It used to be that fat people were jolly. All that shit changed. Now fat people, the assholes. I mean, just fat people, just ridiculous. Let me tell you something. So I go up and before um, um, I can say anything. She says, you know, you have to pay to be here. Mm. <laughs> and I says, I know they, I know that it costs here. She says, it's, it's like, it's like $10. So even when I was agreed to pay you and then nickel and dime, how much I have to says, I, I know how much it costs to be here. I'd like to know where I do pay. Well, you can pay upstairs. That's, all she had to say. But her first thing is to, I'm dressed in business attire. Um, <laughs> I'm coming the time of day where normally people are at work, you don't know who the hell I am. I'm not carrying myself like a student. But you know what? When you deal with this kind of asshole pork chop feminist, you could have on a Brooks Brothers suit every, and you're still just, um, you're like a, a nigga begging for change. It's all the same because it's a black man. He's valueless, right? Someone, someone, unless they were looking at your your checking account statement and had at least seven or uh, eight figures on it. You, you get so, where I'm coming from. I, I absolutely. And and, and yeah. so, and I thought about it. I complained about her too, and that's my suggestion to black men. Don't just get a passport. Running away from pork chop feminism doesn't settle the problem because you're going to have to come back here. Now people be, need to begin to complain, to report people, to get people fired, to do the shit that they do. Uh, when I was in Tennessee, and this is a custom for a lot of black women they get mad at a black man they go to his job and create a scene and get him fired hmm. it, it's like and <laughs> and no one considers that shit insane no one does and so I'm not saying go to anyone's job but people need to bust people down if someone's stealing don't hide for them. Some of these niggas need to be in jail. Certain people need to be punished. Some of these ladies need to catch some hell. Someone said regarding the incident at the hot dog stand, if it was a white man hitting a black mother with a closed fist and pung lip, wouldn't we want the son to take him out? Oh, I'm not saying that the son, um, but you see, what leads up to this, you took the gun with you to the damn hot dog stand. And you knew that bastard was there. This lady's facing charges, so they need to not flip it around and put it on me. If you knew you had a man that was abusive towards you, so you needed to carry around a gun, and you knew your son, who sensed it to his mom's safety, 
you've literally put your son the same way. And whoever wrote that uh, would justify the mama that used that boy in Mississippi to call the cops, the boy that got shot in the chest. The mama's having a fight with the man. And it's probably a female they put it in there. And they felt justified to put the child in the middle of the conflict with the father, with that risk of the police coming there. It's unconscionable. A lot of folks are brutes. <clears throat> a lot of folks are accessory to the deaths of their children because they're not real women. They're female. They get a pass. Also, also they say, wouldn't that set the precedent for stop, for stopping violence against black women? <clears throat> Well, I, th I think first and foremost, before Dr. Short even gives his answer to that, is, is number one, it was in Chicago. Number one, as we would say in the people from the street, why is she running around with a gun? Yeah, with the gun laws in Chicago? Like they it, had the hardest gun laws in the country in Chicago. And, and, and I don't mean to be um, you know, too critical, but sometimes we got to understand, if you're going to a situation where you have to have a gun on you, Maybe you shouldn't go there as a woman, or maybe you shouldn't go there at least bringing your child there. Yeah, so we got to understand. Why couldn't she cook at home? Why did you need to go to that particular place? Yeah, we we got sometimes we got to understand, and it's unfortunate that the, the the brother even had to put his hands on a woman. But sometimes we need to understand that we go to situations that's gonna that's not of no benefit for us hmm. whatsoever. Somebody should have even had him in their life. I do blame you for who you sleep with. If you pick a violent ass man to be with and he's violent, why wouldn't he kick your ass if he's been gangbanging everybody else? Why is this idea, you know, it won't happen to me. He's not like that with me. Not yet. And then what we'll do is the cycle continues. Now he did the young the, I don't the young care what guy, the young guy's been media. criminalized. You know yeah. he's gonna get raped and messed over. Yeah. Her, son, her son is messed up for the rest of his life. I don't care what social media says he's going to jail. Yeah, she's he's gonna be harmed. She, and and Chicago leads the country in terms of people under the age of 18 being locked up in particular black male children i'm sorry these women use in particular their children male and female like cattle you ask the majority of men men that be in the street that's into that street element majority of the beefs start behind a woman it's the second leading cause of of homicide for black men and so a lot of these women are into this drama and I'm not uh, blaming them exclusively, but they play a role in it. They play a role in it and they are guilty on par with the men. And uh, it's foreign for black women to hear about being accountable and responsible in these issues. It's get used to it. If I'm driving someone out there crazy, great, suffer. I get blamed for stuff. As I said, we walk in, someone black and male shoplifted. No matter if you paid every time you come in there, they're still checking you like the person that shoplifted, right? Um, welcome to the club, black women. It's it's <laughs> it's done. And if you it's look at the done. majority, you look at the majority of the videos that we see on social media that go crazy. If they're not overly sexual with women, they're gonna be some woman, as we say, done turned up, and they, and I hate to use this phrase, acting like an animal, or at least acting like. They have no discipline or self-respect. Now, let's go back to feminism, because feminism at its core, uh, white radical lesbian feminism, which has been uh, filtered into the Black community, wants women to be unfeminine, mean, manly. It hates what you call patriarchy, which is basically men being the heads of their family. It's interesting. 
Uh, you want child support, you want bills paid and all of that, but you don't want a man having any say. This backward shit. I, we, look, uh, sisters, we don't give a fuck if you don't like what we're talking about. We don't care anymore. We're going to talk about it. Um, we don't, we, we can go to another country and meet someone so you no longer have this monopoly on, on black men anymore. So if you're not prepared to be an honest, broken relationships, you're going to be by yourself. And the the white women, all the other women, and, and the gays too, are fighting to get black men. And you guys are bombing. Best bodies, best look, worst attitudes, worst mm. sales pitch. Your elevator pitch for why someone would want to be in a relationship with a person with an attitude more toxic than Love Canal and Hiroshima put together, you're insane. But feminism teaches women that, uh, in particular, radical feminism, that all women have been oppressed by men. At all times, men are hurting, killing, abusing women, and women need to just be amongst themselves, which is basically lesbianism, sisters. And a lot of you are living um, as, I call a man a fagonist, who is like a male feminist. And I call women social hermaphrodites or social lesbian. You might have sex with a man, but your worldview is like a stud lesbian. You need a penis, but you don't need the man. So that's why a sex toy and a man are interchangeable. And in fact, they're more like a gay dude than a woman. You know, mm. dudes like sex toys too, and so they they're unfeminine. They don't try to look nice. Don't try to keep themselves up. Their roughness, all that. They don't realize that this is what is desired. They want women to be unfeminine, masculine, anti-male, anti-family. But and and for the younger women, and of course, I don't care if you get it. When the women get about my age in their 40s, after all this bullshit, the dust settles, they realize, you know, they've got fewer eggs in one of those Asian corner stores in the hood. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you're getting old, you got kids, you don't want to be alone. And this is why you see a lot, some of the trampiest, sleaziest people of all times are Black women that never grew up. We're trying to act young and funky, trying to compete with girls in their 20s and you're 60 and, you know, you got a stretch mark hanging over your to, your tank top. I mean, you know, you should be baking pound cake or being someone's grandma, but you, you know, you, you're just out of order. And they'll even say that, Dr. Short, the, the, some of the slogans now is, we're not our grandmothers and aunties from back in the and day. And that's your damn problem, that you aren't your grandmothers and your aunties. And let's just talk about the net effect of feminism has been the death of us as a people, mm. the death of the family. All these women running out, getting their heads glued and their nails. And, I mean, they got nails that look like, you know, um, a werewolf and shit. All of this stuff that's going on and the kids are suffering. They can't read. They're emotionally disturbed. They're just, I mean, just all of that. They're crack babies. All of this has happened, and that's on you, mama. You. The women got up and decided that they didn't want to be in the home anymore. Well, then who fills the vacuum? Porn, dope, gangs, depression, suicide. And, and the number of children shooting their mothers and grandmothers. Shocking. Awful. But predictable. Direct correlation. Direct correlation you, of this movement. You, you know, um, as when I was a teacher, one of the things I noticed is kids from certain families, their vocabulary um, was stunted. Meaning that mama doesn't even talk to her kids. And I don't know, trust me, be a teacher and you have to repeat stuff 10, 20, 30 times. And you're like, damn, a teacher told us once, we better fucking remember. But, and the whole school system, which uh, basically is daycare for women that don't give a fuck about the kids that they had. 
So and that so that during the pandemic, they was upset they had to be home. Yes, they, they're upset they had to be home. And I'm thinking about the mother in Baltimore that had never checked the report cards of her child. Didn't know they were failing, was mad at the school. Horror, you on Section 8. The least you could have done <laughs> is, is look at his reports. Of course, they'll say, well, his father wasn't there. What if his father's dead? Is he still <clears throat> responsible for reading the child's report? You know, anything to do that. Uh, got a statement. Regardless of what gender you assume, I am beyond the mo this moniker. Please allow me to go on record and say way too many black women abuse their sons. And I know this is why black men resent black women. Woo. Well, uh, I haven't been abused by my mother, but uh, not only abused mentally, a whole lot of black men are sexually abused by mothers. I see this stuff in church. Oh, he's cute. He is so fine. He's going to be a hoe when he grows. I've even heard this in church, neck kissing, and touch sexualized little boy. And I'm thinking. He's so, he, he, no, he's not, he's not a, he, I can't wait till he get of age. Wait till he yes. gets about 16, Do you 17. you realize you don't see men, at, maybe they'll say it, but they're not touching a, a little girl because people would think you're a pedophile or whatever, wouldn't they? No standards or rules for women. And lots of them for men. Not that the men follow them, but the men are aware of them. And they'll, they'll say uh, to one of their girlfriends, oh, where my little husband at? Talking about their son. And then the mother sit there and be like, uh, he home? Why are you let your girlfriend call your son, your, your son her little husband? <laughs> because a lot of boys function as their husband, like that boy that shot that man in Chicago. And these women are living vicariously through their children. Mm. And sometimes they do it with their daughters. Feminism basically has said that women were slaves at all times. Women had never had any mo moments of compassion or care. Just men have been hurting and violating and brutalizing women. They've done nothing. Just women have just been complete slaves and miserable since the beginning of time. You know, that's one that's one thing that's interesting. You see a lot of people will take their personal experience of the choices that they made and then have this world view that yeah, they universalize all, the personal. Yeah. Um you'll find in particular the feminist, pork chop feminist in particular, what's happened to me is how everything is. Instead of it's my story, it's your cooch, it's your tattoo, it's the eyeball tattoo that you put on your left titty. Not everybody has an eyeball tattoo on their left titty, just you. Yeah. Now, feminism, there's some things. There's first wave feminism, where the woman supposedly, I guess, won the right to vote and own property, you know, that stuff. Legit, legit, for the most part. No, no problem with that. Own property, vote have education and stuff, of course. But then there's this third wave, this other stuff where I don't need no man and uh, men in the household is a problem. There's a little feminist teacher, a little lesbian named Mary Daly that used to be up at Boston College. And uh, what she was teaching the young woman when I was in school was that all penile penetration of a vagina was rape. <sighs> So the only good sex that women can have is with other women. Wow. Any man having sex is a rape. Even in married, it's all rape. And what's her and name? Mary Daly. D-A-L-Y. Mary Daly. Yeah. Dr. Short always, for those in the chat, he always gives you something to research. <laughs> Look her up. Um, <clears throat> they, this, this is some, so... In fact, a lot of these people, so they consider men having sex with women is rape. Wow. Which means every man is a rapist or he wants to be a rapist. Well, there's no way we can be good men. Do you see how it works? All men are bad and all women are good. And only women can love each other. And the best thing a woman can do 
in the case of uh, Margaret Sanger, a feminist, as the best thing a woman can do is kill her children. So killing babies, not being in a home, not being feminine, uh, and you're a god because you're a woman. You don't need uh, God in heaven because he like made women slaves to men. So be your own god. Hmm. And let what me, happens let, when you have these kids? Uh, let me ask you, Doctor Short. How 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 did the um? And, and I know you mentioned it a, a while ago in one of the one of the talks that I heard you speak about when you mentioned that daggone uh, Pauli Murray. And I always think of that name every time this subject comes upon and how it intertwined or, or basically manipulated the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go back and say that before you had the civil rights movement, you had the abolitionist movement, you had white lesbians, abolitionists, who were trying to get from under white men to be important, they go somewhere where they can agitate against the system for their own power. The abolitionist women, the not Lucretia Mott, but uh, Katie Stanton, um, Alice Paul, Susan B. Um, Anthony, Susan, the, the, these are studs, studs, white studs, lesbian macho studs, who were basically, you know, outcast type women. There's a thing called the, um, I think it's called the water cure, where the women would swim together naked and such, white women. Well, black women are with them now, so don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> all, all, yep. We so follow. We these follow them. White we wanted to be, they women, was white that day. These white lesbian women got with people like Frederick Douglass as a way to agitate for them their rights. You know, let's pick up a cause. And let's say we want to end slavery. They didn't really, well, I guess they want to end slavery, but to show how important they were to get power from white men. And what happened when black men who died in the tens of thousands in the Civil War, and as I said, my great, great, great grandfather served in the Civil War in his 60s. I think he was 64 years old where he joined the United States Army to fight. His sons fought. Uh, my other uncles fought. Black men are decisive. I have a, it's here in the D.C. Uh, uh, Af African American Civil War Memorial. Abraham Lincoln said that black men were decisive in why the Union won. Not white women, but black men. So at the end of the Civil War, when black men were given the right to vote, these radical lesbian feminists called black men apes and monkeys and everything else and were saying, how could you give black men the vote before you give it to white women? So white women were one of the vocal elements, North and South were against black men voting. How about that? Now let's go further and say that in the abolition, I'm sorry, in the suffragette movement, the white women did not see the black women as equals and dogged them. And yet, you know, the same way black women deal with no good black men, a lot of you do. Black women put up with bullshit from white lesbians and white feminists. Um, they complain about how they were treated in the civil rights movement. They didn't let women all out in front. Well, hell, y'all didn't need to be out in front. This was a thing for us to get manhood. Black women weren't on the front of the Civil War. You want to see 40,000 black women shot down? Men fight wars. A lot of times this, and but these white feminists, are, these men should have let you. White men don't let white women do shit. Look at the number of white women in Congress relative to white men. Mm. And look at the number of black women in Congress relative to black men. It's almost one to one. We, as much as sisters talk this lie and this bullshit about black men, black women have been the most equal in the treatment of their women than any men on this planet. You show me another country where uh, two thirds or more of the people going to college, or, or more than that, 70% of the people going to college are female, and the males are either going to jail or going to work. It's just the opposite throughout for most people throughout the world. And who complains and bitches about that, that they don't have any opportunities and how oppressive. 
black women. It's amazing. They get it. In fact, they want to get it wrong because in reality, let me just say to you, it's the same thing in white feminism. I have a book. Uh, it's called Luciferian Feminism. At its core, feminism teaches women, either it's implied or otherwise, that God let women down by making men more important than them. And so a lot of women see Satan going to Eve to give her that fruit or whatever. He was trying to free her. He was the ally. Yeah, he's Satan is the friend of women. Whew. And 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 hold on, let me get the goddamn book because I'm not making this stuff. <laughs> Dr. Short will be back shortly, you guys. You know what? Let me do it a different way. I I have so many books up in there. I couldn't even. I got books piled up. Hold on. Let me pull. Let me just pull the title up this way. I'm sorry. I I, I love. I love having um, the books. Just show you. It's a title. It's a book I should have. Um, I want to do my book club and find that book and read some of it. But yeah, these women that are into this are into Satanism has a lot to do with feminism. In fact, the witches, if you get into the witch's broom, women used to penetrate themselves with brooms. That's the whole reason that the broom is associated <laughs> with witches. And that broom isn't just a rider. They, 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 you see them riding, but the real riding, they would plug themselves with it, even put certain chemicals and things on the broom to stimulate themselves. Mm. This is, oh, yes, there's a witchcraft and feminism all go together. Um, hold on, let me get this book. Luciferian. feminism and so because people think I make this stuff up to me I'm just here it is actually here's a book it's satanic feminist see if you can get it hold on oh, this way yeah they can see it wow wow <laughs> feminism basically what's implied the early feminists felt that Satan was their friend. Satan was trying to free women from Jesus Christ, from God the Father, from his disciples, and from men. And so Lucifer is the ally. That was power that he was giving to Eve. You start looking at churches, who brings in a whole bunch of the controversial bullshit that's not in the Bible? A lot of times it's these women with this off-the-wall shit, and everyone tries to keep them happy and let them bring in all this occultic shit. There is part of it is that women are in rebellion against God's order. And it's coming to bite them on the ass through this transgenderism, 
where men have decided that they can be, shoot, <laughs> they see all the advantages and all the hookups and all the stuff that women say they don't have. And they decide, so, shit, I don't even have to run half as fast and get to say, as a, shit, I'll be a woman so I can beat their asses. <laughs> and I get so, to look at Beaver. I get to look at Beaver in the locker room too. I mean, so you get all these dudes who everybody's going to be a female because I've watched women get jobs and shit over men and and it didn't even make any sense, but there was this given because women have to have, give it to women, give it to women, give it to women. And it, they've made the last two or three generations of men pay for shit that men used to do. My grandfather, I never did that stuff to anyone. You know, we're told not to blame white people for slavery in the past. And my issue is, no, you can't blame them for slavery in the past, but you can blame them for acting like a slaveholder in the present. Mm. Vice versa, if I don't act like Mr. from the color purple, neither you shouldn't trip on me and you can't blame me for Mr. We get both and as black men. We get blamed for stuff. We weren't even around to do it to anyone. And no matter how different we are from that, we get treated and punishment for what men are supposed to have done. And if you listen to this whole logic, you know who has all the power to oppress women? Black men. You don't see black women pushing up against white men, and you don't see white women doing it either. Mm. Someone asked it's, very... it's only black men all of a sudden, we're the men holding everything. That's why they're pushing so hard to faggotize black men. It's those black, straight black men. You've seen that in Griot. They're the new white people, black men that want family and order who don't want women getting raped on the subway and in and, and, and the back hallways. We're the problem. Who'd have thought a feminist would? A liar-ass so, feminist. Someone would. asked a question. I don't know if they're being sarcastic or what. I don't know. I'll just ask it. Someone said, if Dr. Short is Generation X, he's not Generation X. I am and, Generation X. Okay, he's, okay. He's asked him what the definition of feminism was in 1987, collegiate syllables. I took a woman's studies course class, and so far, a lot of what he says would make mm. him a feminist circle 1987. But I do know no man wants to be called a feminist. <clears throat> well, I, I'm not a feminist. I'm an equalitarian. Feminism circa 1987 equals women should not be abused because they are physically weaker than males. Oh, I'm not talking about them being abused, so I don't know how you got that. I think they're... <laughs> They're interpreting it as they wish to interpret it. I'm saying that treat people the way you want to be treated. Be nonviolent, and nonviolence should be accorded to you, period, for everybody. So I'm an equalitarian. Feminism at its heart says that it's anti-patriarchal. I'm pro-patriarchal. I can't be a feminist by virtue that I don't think that single parent households is a way to rock. I don't think that uh, <laughs> that that being male is toxic any more than I think being female is toxic. But being a feminist is toxic. Being a fagonist is toxic. Being a simp is toxic. Being a brother fucker is toxic. Um, mm -hmm. Being a stud is toxic. I hope he answered your question for you. <laughs> yeah, so 87. I, I'm pro-women, 100%. I'm not anti-women. We're anti I want, I, want, I want the people in the chat to know that most people don't understand um, right. we're, no, we're, this, we this want, ideology of feminism. It's, it's, it's ugly. Let me read what radical feminism is. I want to pull it up. What, what we're against and what I will keep being against. I could care less who doesn't like it. Uh, we're, we're telling it to go to hell. We hate it, and we should hate it. Um, radical feminism. Let me read this from Wiki. It's a good example. Um, feminism is a perspective within feminism that calls for a radical reordering of society in which male supremacy is eliminated in all social and economic contexts while recognizing that women's experiences are also affected by other social divisions such as race, class, and sexual orientation. The ideology of this movement emerged in the 60s. Let me go on to say, 
Radical feminists view society fundamentally as a patriarchy in which men dominate and oppress women. Sounds like some CRT shit for, for, for holes. Radical feminists seek to abolish patriarchy. That means getting rid of the family, getting rid of what's normal. And a struggle to liberate women and girls from an unjust society by challenging existing social norms and institutions. So let's get rid of manhood. Let's get rid of family. That's the only way women can be free. There's a very good scholar, uh, radical lesbian feminist by the name of Judith Butler. The whole word we use gender. And if you saw that discussion between Ted Cruz and that black uh, feminist who works for the human rights campaign, she kept using gender and he's talking about sex, thinking that gender and sex mean the same thing. To a feminist and to other people, gender is whatever gets you sexually satisfied or stimulates you is your gender. So there is male and female, but then there are genders. So maybe you like eating poo-poo, or maybe you want to screw a kid, or a pit bull, or, or maybe you want to have sex with the ice machine at work. I mean, that's your gender. It's almost impossible to even explain. Gender could be anything. You could get off to looking at... Um, Animal porn. Do you know that there are animal porn laws in this country for people who want to see uh, someone screw a cow or a camel or something? And some states it's okay to distribute to sell and others you can't, but you can possess pictures of animals and people screw it. It's just, it's just, it's, yeah. That's gender. And, and the whole role of feminism is to get rid of sex, to get rid of being a man or a woman. In fact, if you really get around these radical feminists and other people, they'll tell you there's no such thing as womanhood. That's why the feminists are not really complaining about men flapping their dicks at women in the women's rest, restroom, men and women's sports, because they don't think there's any such thing. So when people ask what's a woman and these women can't answer the question, they don't think women exist. They don't think men exist either. Uh, in fact, if you get into Judith Butler, we'll tell you manhood and womanhood is just, it's an indoctrination. Nobody's male or female. We are being, we're being told to be something <clears throat> instead of us actually being. You're a man because someone tricked you into thinking that you're a man. In reality, you would ever turn you on. Yeah, he said Imagine that. So if I want to have sex with the centipede, that's a kind of gender identity. He said, um, I'm Gen X, and I've seen things turn nuts in my lifetime. I train women in martial arts, and one of my female students called me a feminist because I wanted her to protect herself from grape, which we know what that means. Yes, I'm a man, and like I said, the word has been co-opted, so to speak, since 1987. Wow. Wow. Well, I know what it's like to meet with one of the ladies that was talking to President Clinton. I don't want women to get raped. I've had women in my family raped, murdered. I, I'm i tired. I don't want any of this. I'd like it all to stop. Best thing you do is be smart. But I know part of the feminist thing is they want the women to get raped, sir. He's calling you a feminist. She's calling you a feminist and she's misunderstanding it. You want the woman to be safe so she's whole. The feminists want them to get raped so they'll be angry with men. See, men did this. It's if we all got together at a big, long conference table and decided to rape all the women and hurt them, and see, that's why you can't be straight. You can't have their babies, kill their babies, because men are bad, but, yeah. right? And my body, this is my, body my choice. That, yes. <laughs> um, I, always find, it, I always find that slogan to be the most asinine slogan. When... Well, I mean, but th what they're really saying is, is that... Um, I could do whatever I want, but that means if I want to walk around naked in Central Park at one in the morning, <laughs> and some people run the train on you. Um, I don't want anyone to run a train on you, but you know, you really helped that train situation by being out there. Yeah. Yeah, he said he told her not to call him that, but he knew then what she meant. Yeah, she definitely meant it. But she but does. in reality, no, you're not a feminist. You're a compassionate man. But 
she had to put it in a feminine term for him. What he doesn't get is that no man really loves or wants to protect or help women out. So she has to feminize you or make you more female-like to accord you respect and honor that this is a good man that respects and loves women, she attacks the feminist thrust to destroy the relationship between men and women, to destroy the family, to destroy the patriarchy. They even, they even hijacked that when Malcolm said uh, that the black woman was the most least protected woman on the face of this earth. They even took that, that statement that Malcolm made in the 60s and re rebrandished that, and now they use that as the Ain't no men out here protecting women. That's the well, new thing. Okay, but a lot of these women don't want to be protected. Now, let me keep reading. The struggle, this is a feminist struggle, includes the opposing the sexual objectification of women. I'm wondering if the women don't want to be objective. Why are these people twerking, jiggling their asses of all ages and teaching their kids to do it? I mean, and, and these are women teaching people to objectify themselves not men teaching the girls to twerk, but mama teaching, okay, or friends. The objectification of women, raising public awareness about such issues such as rape and other violence against women. Uh, there have been men out here concerned about women's safety, in particular Frederick Douglass, Martin Delaney. The fathers of the women's movement in this country are black men, not even white women. Martin Delaney, Frederick Douglass. These are key people to protect women. Alexander Crummel. These are men who were upset about how their mothers were treated and were upset about how Black women were treated back in slavery days, were the most vocal people about how women needed to be treated better. Not white women who owned almost half of the chattel slaves in this country and benefited North and South. The loudest voice were men, the Black men that went uh, and the New England states, the North, roughly eight and a half out of every 10 black men served in the Union Army. That's how many black men went to the fight to free us. Okay, there's just no, uh, no greater love for their people than these men that want to do that. And part of, part of freedom was being able to form a family that the women and children couldn't be sold off. Um, that's not feminism. That's what I would call um, virtuous patriarchy. And we, we need patriarchy. So I'm here to advocate patriarchy. The answer to fight feminism is that we must have patriarchy. We need to put that word in our mouths that we are black male, I should say black men who are patriarchs and we're patriarchs and proud. And we're going to take that word back. If we can make nigger good, we can make patriarch good too. How you doing? <laughs> Keep it rolling. Now let me read some more about this stupid stuff that these... And and I don't want to hear from any woman. This woman is usually the homely black women that can't get the white women. The black women that can get the white women to run with them, they call themselves feminists because they have white girlfriends. And the black woman that can't get a white woman, they womanist. Womanist. That's how I feel. I don't, I don't care if I'm right. They're wrong about so many things. I don't care. Look at this. Uh, they also are challenging the concept of gender roles. In reality, we need to put the word sex roles. See, they put the word gender and it confuses. The minute you try to talk sex, they talk gender. You talk gender, they talk sex. It's to confuse the hell out of us. We need to go back to using the word sex, male and female. They tricked us when they got the word gender. A lot of folks figured, oh, the word sex is kind of charged and it's offensive to people. So gender is safe. And it was a trick. Nobody's freakier or nastier than some of these people, including the rainbows. So we can use the word sex. Look at this. So they want to get rid of gender roles. Let me give you a quick uh, feminist story. I was uh, talking to a feminist, a pork chop feminist associate of mine. And she says, I don't think there should be roles. Mm. And I said to her, well, uh, sis, who breastfeeds the baby when it's born? And she didn't answer. 
So you mean you're going to leave it to the baby or to the man to decide who breastfeeds the baby? By the way, she's never had a fucking child. A lot of these people that do this stuff are sterile people. They they don't know anything. I may not have children, but I can assure you I'm not sterile. Um, I can't. <laughs> I don't want to prove it, but I'm, I'm not. These people who can't procreate these women who've messed their bodies up being holes when they were in college come up with these things because they're angry and they're embittered. There's a book called The Scum Manifesto. I read it on my old book thing where the woman talked about killing men. It's called The Society for Cutting Up Men, Scum. It just says how men are awful. They're all monsters. All of them are, are filth. And women are just so good and perfect. But they want to get rid of the gender roles and challenging what radical feminists see as the racialized gender capitalism mm -hmm. that characterizes the United States and many other countries. So they want to get rid of the male privilege and they want to get rid of sex distinction. So basically see women as men. Now these holes have been pushing for this. Now you got the men who don't want to be seen as distinct from women taking all this shit. Now they mad. That's something else that feminism has taught women that they could have it both ways. You could be a woman, a man, and neither all at the same time. And if yeah. men try to be men, that's no good. And then when men try to be women, we're trying to take their space. In reality, there's, everything you do as a man is wrong. <laughs> to hell with that. In fact, we need to just be wrong. So everybody should be a patriarch. So that dude, he needs to start calling himself a patriarch when he does the karate class. This karate class is being given on behalf of the virtuous patriarchs that want women safe. <laughs> I'm not a feminist. And just keep using it. Just say patriarch. It feels good. Especially when you know a feminist doesn't like it. Use it. Say it. Shout out your patriarchy. If Oprah can shout out abortion, we can shout out men should be in charge. <laughs> let me see. No, ask, let me see. Let me read some more. But let me see. Theory and ideology. Um, women want what, what feminism is really evil is that on top of that it just wants to disrupt everything it's an evil disruptive uh, corrupt system everybody should be against it everyone should hate it um, women are the real losers and if feminism is not stopped, the day will come if it's not already here where women can get raped in restrooms and spaces that used to be just for women. And you'll get women to defend a man calling himself a woman, raping women. It's already happening. Here in DC, these uh, shelters, the men get to be in there. So imagine if I'm Jack the Ripper, and I see some sexy mama with their kids, probably want to rape the kids too, just go to the homeless shelter where she is and say I'm a woman, and they have to let me in, or I'll sue. <laughs> yeah, I'll sue. See sue. what these feminists, feminists have made life miserable for women. Feminists are the enemies. The only people really fighting against this trans thing and all this are patriarchs, the good guys the white hats of the sexual world. You should honor us. <laughs> Stand by your patriarchal man. Say it loud. We're <laughs> patriarchs and proud. Now, let me see. We've got some questions out there. We Anybody in the chat quick... got any questions before Dr. Short uh, leaves us for the night? All right. Go on once. Oh, yeah, I see something. I can't hear you. You can't hear me? Yeah. Not, so, yeah. Because <laughs> we can stop here and do another Wait. session. Because we, uh, we need to talk about Pride Month. He said the feminism Dr. Short is describing sounds <clears throat> LGBTQ-ish and anti-male. 
It is. Why can't we just call these women that? I will always kind of defend the term feminism because I don't remember it. I can't hear this. you. Let me let me come out and come back. All in. Right. Dr. Short will be right back. Just give Dr. Shaw one second. You can hear me so, now, Dr. Short? Yeah, much clearer <clears throat> now. He said the um the feminism that Dr. Short is describing sounds gay and anti-male. It is gay and anti-male. Why, why can't we just call these women that? I will always we, well, call them Well, we do. We call them studs. We are doing it. The problem is not enough people are doing it. Way too many, in particular men, all, for all the shit that feminists say about men, the men have been trying really hard, bending over backwards like they studied yoga. To, to show women that we're cool. We don't want her. We love women. You know, it's our duty to bang booty. We're not, we don't hate anybody. We're cool. They don't want that. The more you try to please or show decency that you want things right, the more extreme they go. They're very simple. They're ex identical to the LGBTQ. The more stuff, the more flags, the more holidays, the more corporate spots. It's never enough. These people hate God, dude. They hate the, the order of things. They want to subvert everything. At the same time, they don't want you to call it out. And a whole bunch of us who don't know any better that say, hey, look, man, I don't want a problem. Most of us want to be cool. We don't want a problem. OK, well, just get I've listened to this my whole life as an extra. Just give it to the girls. Just the women. Some women. I just watch people just give. I believe the woman. I trust the woman. They don't even check. Because the woman said, well, women have been down. So we, we all standards, all rules, everything has to be tossed out so women will be happy. And the more we do that, the more fucked up they get. So, of course, that term has definitely took on a different definition. Dr. Short no, mentioned. But the, but, the, the, but the feminist movement has always been a lesbian movement. If you were listening, I said to you. All the way okay. back to, to Susan all the Bianchi. way back that they were studs. It's always been a stud heavy thing, always. And it, and 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 one of the things that Doctor Short mentioned was these phases. They got like what they call three different phases of the feminist movement, and, and now that's we, four. Like, but but it but it increasingly becomes it, gay. Yeah, it'll be and it'll be it'll be and, five in a minute. <laughs> well, I think the trans are five, and this is why you don't hear the. If you start looking at when the LGBTQ thing got big, it's a part of the women's movement. Like Barbara Jordan, everybody likes her, but she was a black stud. First black congresswoman from Texas was a stud who was in the white woman named Barbara Jordan. Everybody screams over Shirley Chisholm. I call her Shirley Chisler. Shirley Chisler was the first person to run for president to make LGBTQ and baby killing platform issues for a major political party. It's a black woman. The LGBTQ movement and the women's movement are basically Siamese twins. The gays are trying to overturn heterosexuality and the, the, the feminists are trying to overturn patriarchy. Ultimately, they're after the same thing. We want to get rid of society's heterosexual uh, patriarchal system and replace it with confusion. They work together. Kamala Harris, I, I can't prove it, but I think that she swings both ways. Hillary Clinton more than likely swings both ways. 
and these women. Barbara Mikulski was a stud, the senator. A, a whole bunch of these women that you see out here, they're studs. Billie Jean King's a stud. Martina Navratilova's a stud. Grinders a stud. And when you start seeing these women put out here, these, a lot of these women are studs. All along, studs, studs, studs. They got more studs than Elvis in Vegas. But you know what? All you have to do, in particular, I have to say this to black men, we we see lesbians as superheroes. We don't really take lesbianism seriously in the black male community because lesbians have pussies. Anybody with a pussy is cool. And my thing is a pussy may be cool, but not the person that it's attached to. All pussy is good, but not all persons with pussies are good. And this is something that we need to teach. And young black men are not taught that. So basically every person with a pussy is a freedom fighter. They're loving and kind. That's bullshit. Although the pussy may be good, the person that has it is not good. It's the same way that that dude that was beating on that woman in the hot dog stand probably had good dick, but wasn't a good person. Now, women are able to say that he lays the pipe, but he's an asshole. We seem to say if the pussy's good, everything else, we just forgive everything else. That's a horrible deal that black men don't demand anything more from a woman than pussy. Mm. And don't get that or sharing that with another woman or a man on the side. We're We're the only men that negotiate out. We give away our authority and our place in society over what we should expect. Pussy is sort of like... um, fries or like water when you go to a restaurant. You're supposed to get that shit. Who told black men that pussy's way up on Mount Olympus and you can't reach it? Go to other countries, women are dime a dozen. Wouldn't this idea come from that just, oh, well, we just have to be complete chumps and punks so we won't have any pussy to all run out. This pussy shortage mentality of black men is a curse. Mm. I mean... Pussy's like sand on the beach, but these dudes act like it's a hope diamond. So that's why you have these ugly women in power chairs and shit talking about how sexy they are. You know, you got a super so- super soaker sized titty hanging on your knee, and you want people to, you know, I should be on the cover. They shouldn't body shame me. I could be a model. Yeah, you could be a model for muscular dystrophy or UNICEF. <laughs> Hey, um, <clears throat> we're gonna close for now. Uh, mm-hmm. Stay tuned. We might be back tonight, hopefully. And uh, we, you know, Doctor Short always gonna give us something to go with. Appreciate Doctor Short. Make sure you guys support Doctor Short and what he's doing with his um GoFundMe. Yes. His is is what is it? Bipack again? It's Backpack. It's Backpack. a group, Black American Constitutional Political Action Committee, and of course, my 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 thing here is our cash chef. We absolutely keep it rolling because uh you know i just was talking to someone before i came to the show these people were now negotiating with the black streaming company oh my god i may have my own podcast you should hook up with their answers too they're reasonable to just take this to another level yeah. you know like i told you i'm tired of people censoring my shit they don't like us having these real conversations and Yes, and I, I love it. I H A T E feminism. I'm not trying to love it. It's it feels so good to say you hate feminism. I hate that shit. All the years I tried to get along and put up, fuck it. I feel free. I mean, before I, I mean, and I had a passport a long time ago. You know, this is my concept, and I want to say this to everybody. It is called gender disobedience. Say it for me, brother. Gender disobedience. Like civil disobedience and the civil rights movement. <laughs> right. I'm disobeying feminists. I deliberately do it. I talk in a way I know that will make a feminist go crazy. And shit. <laughs> Keep doing shit. All of us need to stop. Get off the plantation of going along with this dumb shit. To say I'm a patriarch. Remember, it used to be you couldn't say you were black. People would be ashamed. Yeah. yeah. Well, and we've been ashamed to call ourselves patriarchs. Now we need to come out and be pack and proud <laughs> so i'm a pat i'm pack and proud and just come out and just act crazy as with patriarchs i do like people cooking home-baked briskets i do like cookies i love seeing women in aprons 
if I had enough money, no, nah, bitch, I would not want you fucking the boss for promotions. You can stay at home and make certain that my kids can read and write and that the post postman isn't fucking them because you're off working trying to compete with me. We need patriarchy black back in the black community. We must destroy feminism. If we're going to make it as a people, we can't coexist with feminism and the black community survival are diametrically opposed. We are either going to be genocided out, wiped out, whether it's abortion or whatever, or we're going to survive. And it's up to black men in particular to tell women to shut the fuck up. You guys had 50 years. You almost destroyed us as a group of people. Now the good, responsible black men are going to stage what I call a gender, a patriarchal gender regime change. We'll have a sit-in, too. <laughs> I, yes, I love it. We're, we're going to take over. It's it's over. It's a coup. Uh, these sisters, these sell out uh, pork chop feminists and traders have let the illegals in our community, our children and women are disappearing all over the country, being killed. Fentanyl is everywhere. This is what pork chop, traitor black female ghetto feminism has done. And also fagginess. These are black men, sex slave, beggar niggas that think the only way to get along is to just kiss every woman's ass and be against every other brother. That's why they're also called brother fuckers. We must take over our community. We have to. Uh, those people that martial arts do, you need to karate chop their asses in your mind and then your life. Punish these people. Get them the hell out of our lives. Stop cooperating. Another word for civil disobedience is called non-cooperation. I refuse to cooperate with feminism. I won't. And all of us should just say no and just say no to feminism. And, and, and every, everything you do, in fact, God bless Kevin Samuels. He was a prophet from God, I believe, divinely ordained to liberate black men and black people from the curse of feminism. Uh, I believe he was assassinated in the spirit by wicked feminists, probably some witch COVID burning sage with, with pussy blood on it, which probably really killed his ass. I mean, that's probably some really strong shit. There. Can you imagine um, throwing Kotex at Ouija boards, cursing Kevin Sands, whatever? He's gone. But we can carry it on. Now, let me get up off of here. If you want, call me back. Do you have my number? Yeah. You need to call me back. Let's see if we could do another session. And everybody wants to call me today. So um, and what's this person saying? Oh, he said, great, great conversation. I will read some oh, of these yeah. books. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and tell him to send me a donation, my brother. Uh, DR, said, DR Randy Short at, it's my cash app, dollar sign Dr. Randy Short. I absolutely need that. I can buy some more books. I love books. And, um, he said he does. Hold on. Let me read that comment. Hold on. I don't train LGBTQ. If I can help it, I'm a private instructor, actually semi-retired now. <clears throat> well, everybody should retire from helping LGBTQ. Uh, and can you imagine that when they see him? <laughs> oh, I should have taken judo. He can follow me anytime. <laughs> <laughs> With that, everybody have a great. <laughs> I hope he, he got said, a laugh out of that. Can you imagine? Oh, I... <laughs> oh, he said you could count. You could count on. Let me do it in the morning. I caught you on Doctor Shock show, the brother Doctor Shock. Oh, oh, that's my man. We're we're going to be raising hell. We're going to have a regime change, a rebellion against bullshit, against coons. Uh, the best I can do is try to get people to think, open your minds, get angry, get tired. Let me yeah, let they you know, to, they, they, they try to censor everything that Dr. Short does, you guys. I mean, well, this has been going on the last, they, they kind of turned it up the last three, four years. Dr. Yeah. Short may have had his own page that I know of at least five times. Yeah, no, they, they take them down and they we take find down another immediately. way. He may do two or yeah. three videos, and if you catch it, he used to have to do them late at night. I mean, it, it's amazing. They, he would do a video late at night. I would catch it going to work in the morning, and by twelve in the afternoon, uh, it, it would be gone. They would take it down. I mean, it <laughs> yeah, was. Well, I tried to share your last video. Twitter has has blocked me for three days. They said for spam. 
for sharing the last video we did. Wow. With people that I know. Wow. They wanted it. I mean, so anyway, that, that's okay. I'm not going nowhere. And we'll just be, we'll keep it crazy and we'll keep attacking feminism. Um, we, um, uh, patriarchy today, patriarchy tomorrow, patriarchy forever, abolish feminism, patriarchy is good. Uh, <laughs> and all the time, patriarchy is good. God is good and so is patriarchy. Let me get out of here. Bye. Yeah, take care. <laughs>